Hi. Let's talk today about Rankine's formula. So last time we saw or we studied what was the Euler's formula to calculate columns. And coming from that say, study, uh, we noticed that there were at least three types of, let's say, uh, classifying columns. We had the short columns, medium and long columns, you know, when we were using this uh, Euler's formulation. Now, uh, this is pretty interesting because uh, when we were discussing about, you know, what was this point here where the sl slenderness was kind of at the point where the yield strength, you know, touch or was the same as the result from the Euler's formula, which is this hyperbola here, then, you know, that, that created kind of a division, a separation between types of columns. Then in this case, uh, you're going to find in uh, textbooks that you're, you're not going to have medium columns. You know, you're going to have either short columns or long columns. So, but in this distinction was pretty important to make it because it was pretty clear that short columns were going to fail due to crushing stress, you know, kind of the compressive stress applied to the column. And then, you know, long columns were going to fail uh, mostly because of buckling. However, uh, when we were start using this classification of having medium columns, then it was not clear where, what, where, what was the slenderness that was going to dictate that the main failure mechanism was going to be either crushing or buckling. So that's why this 80 here appeared in the exercise we did previously with Euler. Now, again, uh, you're going to find in, in textbooks now when we are using different formulations to calculate uh, columns that, you know, you either have short or long columns. Now, this is one of the cases. This is the Rankine's formula. So it was kind of said that when you had, you know, we, when we tried to use Euler's formulation to calculate columns and then and people did uh, experimental tests to see, you know, if, what was the validity of this, it was found that, you know, many failures kind of were occurring in this area here. So let, let me mark it here. So kind of you no know, failure points were, you know, kind of occurring here. And this crosses kind of mean this, you know, when it broke, you know, and when it failed. And interesting, you know, the longer the column, so the failure point kind of converged towards the Euler's formulation. So it means that if you wanted to calculate a, a short column by using just the compressive strength of the material, it might be highly possible that, you know, you would be underestimating the capacity of your column. Of the resistance of the column. So the strength of your column in the sense. So how to avoid this? So well, Rankin said, okay, what about if we consider that, you know, we have a combination of effects, failure due to compression and failure due to buckling. So this is what was written here. So Rankin's formulated that, you know, okay, a column might, might fail, okay, if the combined effect of crushing or compression and, and buckling, you know, uh, they kind of, uh, let's say, reach a certain limit decided by this PR, which, you know, is going to be known as uh, Rankine's Rankin's, uh, critical load or Rankine's, you know, crushing load, this kind of stuff. Then this formulation is, is really interesting because if you go to the electrical side, uh, when you are analyzing electrical circuits, you're going to find that, for example, in the case of uh, a couple of resistances, uh, couple or attaching parallel, so something like this. We're going to have a resistance like this and then an electrical circuit. Then you have here R1, R2. If you wanted to know the equivalent, the equivalent resistance of this parallel system, the formula to calculate this would be Now, this here, this representation of a parallel system is pretty similar to Rankine's formula. And here, kind of what you're saying is, okay, the equivalent circuit formed by this parallel resistance is formed by, you know, the reciprocal sum of, of those resistances. So this is pretty the same. So Rankine's is such as, it's like, you know, let's consider a parallel, in parallel, the effect of both, let's say, crushing and, and, and buckling. So, and this is kind of a, a nice case of representation you're going to see that the results of Rankine's formula, it under, let's say, it really kind of uh, cuts a lot the range of possibilities in design because it really brings down these, these kind of limit lines here. So you're going to see next. You know. Now, how to determine this Rankine's load? So you just take the compressive or crushing load 
take the, the buckling load defined by Euler's creeping load and then put it together. And if you do a few modifications here or mathematical operations, you're going to find that, you know, from the postulates, uh, you can find these results here. And in the end, uh, this load, which is, you know, this rankings load, it depends only on, you know, well, it depends on the material type, uh, depends on the area, which is a section of the material, and the slenderness, which is defined by the, 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 this relation here, relationship here, and this factor A, which is just a factor that collects, you know, these terms, but you're going to find in the literature or manuals that this factor A is often given, you know, as a number like this. So depending on what type of material you're using, you're going to have a certain factor A that you're going to use to calculate, you know, or to use rankings formulation in this case. Now, uh, you know, this is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then what I did here next was, okay, let me, you know, graph it. Uh, let, me, let me plot all these, you know, Eulers and let me plot rankings to see how they compare one to each other when, you, when having the same, let's say, column and, and the same material. And this is what you find here. So you have, for example, this is the red line and blue line form, where is the Euler formulation or Euler hyperbola here. And you know, this is, this is real, it was just, these are real values. So this blue line here, or blue curve here, comes from the Euler formulation. And then you know, this orange line here comes from the Rankine's formulation. So you see how it, when I meant, when I said that it cuts a lot the range of usability of, of certain columns is because, for example, if you have a case where the slenderness, I'm just marking this point here, the slenderness is this one here, and then the stress applied to the load is this one here. So if you used, for example, Euler's formula, it would say, well, yes, this is a short column, let's put it in that way, well, not short column, but an intermediate column, and, uh, you know, it's below the limit here, so there's still some room for a, for a, you know, and to go to the critical load here, which implies that there exists a, a safety factor here, you know, which you know, I could use the column. However, if I compare the same point, but using Rankine's formula, it's going to say, you know what, you are over the critical load that this column, you know, is, let's say, suggested that it could bear. So you shouldn't use that column. You should, let's say, move to a, a, a less, you know, a column with less slender ratio or you have to modify or you have to reduce the bearing load of that column. So in that sense, again, uh, it's, it's pretty kind of, let's say, uh, let's say contrary or anti-intuitive what to use, you know, I have two complete, let's say, valid formulations, uh, but depending on which one I use, it's going to tell me that, you know, you know what, under this formulation, your column fails, under this other formulation, you know, this, the column works. So which one to use? And then, you know, I, I need to come back again and say that uh, we have to make use of different other tools that allow us to, to choose the right method to calculate or design columns in this case, you know. Uh, for example, if you find standard, standard codes uh, where, you know, lots of tests have been done to, to identify according to which material you could use, you know, this formulation or this other, then it would be the best approach that you can do. On the other case, you know, for very critical applications, there are people who perform these tests, and then according to this column, you know, shape to this material, then you know, the curve is this one. Because, you know, if you're making tests, you might find that the failure points might be something like this. You know, these are kind of failure points of your application, or if you're doing tests there, then it might be possible that not even rankings uh, fits, you know, if you try to put a line uh, that, uh, follows that, let's say, the, the approximates the failure of those points, it might be something like this, you know. Then you could determine experimentally uh, how, what's the critical load for your application, you know, by performing tests, which is pretty expensive and time consuming and resource consuming. So, but anyway, you should have, you know, you, you should make the best, uh, uh, let's say, the mess, the best selection of your design method according to, you know, the more closer experimental information you might have at hand. So next, uh, I will kind of present also a problem how to use a rankings formula to solve this issue, this type of problems. This is pretty, let's say it's pretty straightforward, it's nothing to worry about, but I hope that this sheds some light into now the comparison between rankings formula and, and Euler's formula or hyperbola here 
and say, okay, what you know, what are the characteristics of both? And we saw in the previous part that you know how to derive uh, Euler's formulation. Uh, it was a very interesting form, uh, development of how you come from the loading case to the to the final formula, and then now with rankings formula again, you know, it's pretty also simple what was done to to produce this curve here. So I uh, see you in the next uh, video, and we'll try to let's say continue this uh, to produce to pro yeah to produce let's say a few examples, and also we're going to talk or discuss about other types of formulations to design for columns. Thanks.